Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this walkthrough of the Ember and Aura Tarot by Jamie Richardson. This is going to be a walkthrough of the new Awakening edition of the deck and I'm really, really excited to talk to you guys about this. But first, I have a confession to make. <laughs> so uh, apologies, there are spoilers ahead for episode, my last episode of Say Yes to the Deck. So if you have watched that, don't watch this bit. Just fast forward like a good minute or so. Um, so basically, after I finished my last Say Yes to the Deck, I actually had second thoughts. And that hasn't happened to me before, but I ended up changing my mind on the winner of the deck. There was a few factors that went into that decision, but ultimately this was the one that was really, really calling to me. And I decided that this was going to have to be the one. But I did reach out and speak to the creator of this deck, Jamie Richardson, and she very graciously agreed to send me this deck for a review. So thank you so, so much, Jamie. I really genuinely appreciate that. I'm really excited to share this deck with you guys. And I'm so happy that I followed my gut and I sort of got back to that feeling. It was like as soon as I realized I wasn't going to be getting this deck, I was like, oh no, oh no, and I just knew. So in any case, with that being said, just so y'all know, this is going to be essentially the, this is, this is sort of what ultimately won that episode. So in any case, let's dive into the cards and I am, again, very, very excited. I've already taken the plastic wrap off and taken a bit of a peek at the guidebook. So there's a little bit of like, you're not quite getting, I guess, my very first impressions, but I haven't really spent any time with the cards. So let's dive in. This is the box. It's absolutely a stunning box. Like just the box alone. I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. I love the crystal cluster here and the soft color palette. It's just, it's everything. Nice sturdy box, which we appreciate, and the guidebook. So one of the things I wanted to do was just take a quick peek at sort of a bit of an introduction to the book and I, or to the deck, and I'm so, so glad I did because there's actually some language in here that tells me that there is some, some themes of not only the divine feminine in here, but also some, some associations with Mary Magdalene and a beautiful introduction from the creator. And I really appreciated the time that she took here to share a little bit more about why she created this deck and sort of what it means to her. I really, really appreciate those kinds of messages in guidebooks. But what really caught my attention is this bit here about this deck will reconnect you with the feminine Christ mind embodied by Mary Magdalene. And that felt like such a fun little Easter egg in this deck because while I was drawn to the gentleness of the deck, I did not know that that was an association. And while I think that, you know, I don't think that that's something that's super visible immediately unless you're really looking for it. It just makes me excited to dive into this because I was definitely touched by um, a little bit about Mary Magdalene's story when I read Mary Magdalene Revealed, which is a book I've talked about here on the channel as well. And I think this deck could work really beautifully with work like that. But enough about that. We're going to dive into this a little more in a moment, but let's get into the cards first. So they come not shrink wrapped. Yay. They come with one of these little plastic bands, which is super easy, a little bit, just a tiny amount of plastic. And there is shrink wrap on the outside of the box, but the cards themselves weren't shrink wrapped. I'm finding that more and more with card decks. We're getting them that way. And I really appreciate that. Now, the Awakening Edition I've heard has a little bit richer color or maybe more saturated color than earlier editions. But I have to say I am living for these pinks on the back. So I'm just going to bring that up so you can see it a little bit better. Super gorgeous. And of course, I am all about this gorgeous pink gilding. Now, I will say my experience with gilding like this has been that sometimes it doesn't hold up very well. Um, but this has a bit of that sort of, um, I don't know how to describe it, but there's a quality to certain types of gilding that feels more, more lasting. I wish I knew how to describe it. Um, and this feels like it might be that kind. Now I haven't spent any time riffle shuffling this deck and I know some of you will be like gasping in horror, don't riffle shuffle this deck, but I am a riffle shuffler. So I'll find out in time if the gilding will hold up, but I will say that if it doesn't, um, there's a lot of white space around these cards and I think I could give them a little trim to trim off the gilding and I don't think there'd be anything wrong with that. In fact, I think that might be what Don Michelle over at Boho Tarot did. I'm not entirely sure. But regardless, I'm going to enjoy this pink for as long as I can handle it. It's just gorgeous. And it doesn't feel like uncomfortable to hold. Oh, quick note on sizing. So I do have my Rider Waite Smith Centennial here. And it is in order in case I decide I want to sort of compare any cards. 
but let's talk about the size. So this is a little bit wider and taller, so it feels almost more oracle sized. If I had to venture a guess, I'd say these feel like they're about the size of, actually maybe even slightly smaller than the Star Child. I feel like the Star Child's even wider than this. But yeah, they've got a good amount of room all the way around, so it is a larger deck. I love larger decks, so that doesn't bother me at all. And there was also a little insert that came with the deck that spoke about the extra card in the Major Arcana, which is the Awakening card. And I don't want to spoil that experience for you, but I definitely recommend that you take a look at that insert when you purchase this deck and read that because I think it was really beautiful. And you can tell that a lot of care and attention to detail, I suppose, went into the production of this because there's a lot of spirit and heart, even in just the little bits I've encountered so far in the guidebook and in that little insert. So just a little just a little teaser for you but we're going to dive into the cards i just want to dive into the art think about the art talk about the art get my first impressions so i'm going to zoom us in and let's go through these beautiful cards now this isn't necessarily a new deck in fact i think the original I wonder what it says in the guidebook when it was originally published this edition is a 2019 edition but i think it's been out for i want to say at least a year or two minimum. I want to say it came out in 2018, possibly even 2017. Don't quote me on that. Um, oh, and a quick note about cardstock. It's a really beautiful, smooth mat. So not the kind of mat where things are going to clump or stick together too much. In fact, here, yeah, you can kind of get a feeling for, it's got some flex, it's got some bend, um, and it doesn't feel overly thick. So it feels sturdy and really nice, high quality. It's definitely indie deck quality. Um, but it doesn't feel overly um, stiff and it doesn't feel overly thin. So it's in that sweet spot. Love it. And I love a matte cardstock also partly because I do a lot of things here under bright lights and um, it's just really helpful to have matte cards because it's, I have to do less fussing to make sure that they show up properly. So appreciate that. In any case, let's dive in. So this is one of the cards that actually initially really sold me on wanting this deck because I think this is such an outstanding image that's saying so much. For starters here, uh, the, the image I get is of somebody who has the ability, she has wings here, but she literally set the wings aside and took a cliff dive and is like trusting in like this universal support underneath her. There's a real feeling of faith to this card that I think is really super beautiful. She's still got her wings, but she's not got them strapped on. She doesn't feel like she needs to use them. Instead, she decided to take a literal leap of faith. And I feel like these hands underneath are really speaking to that sort of spiritual support. And I think that is so, so beautiful. I just realized, okay, there we go. Next up, so it was just a little distraction for me. The Magician card here. I love that she's got this eye necklace hanging and it's hanging right around where her sacral area would be. So to me, this is about like sort of seeing from your emotional body or being connected to the emotional body, which I think is really beautiful. Maybe that wasn't intended. That's just the first thing that my, my brain sort of goes to when I look at this card. But I love the feeling of like flame being held overhead and of embodiment and power in this card. Really gorgeous. Oh, I don't know. This might be a long walkthrough. I feel like I have a lot to say. This high priestess with the two trees, the owl, the bowl of water, and it looks like there is, I'm going to have to bring this up so I can see it in the viewfinder actually. It looks, is that a skull necklace? It is a skull necklace because I get this feeling about mysteries of life and death. That's what sort of popped in my head when I saw this. And particularly I see this tree over here it doesn't have any leaves on it. And then this one is like a weeping willow tree, which is amazing um, for a lot of reasons for me personally. We still have the crescent moon in the back and there's the hint of what could be behind her. Perhaps it's water, perhaps something else. There's a real softness to the art style, and I think it's watercolor. Don't quote me, but it looks kind of watery and flowy like that. Love, love, love. Oh, I love the Empress, uh, the Empress's gown here with the roses. And there's a maturity to this card, but also an openness. I love that she's holding this loaf of bread, which for me is like a nod to the wheat we normally see in the traditional Rider Waite Smith card um, for reference. Like this is, when we look at the sort of traditional Rider Waite Smith here, we see the roses on the gown. The symbology is here. Like she's put great care into getting that symbology into the card just in her own way. And I think that's really beautiful. Love this modern emperor. This is so classic emperor to me. We have the little safe here. So there's order and structure to his environment. You get that feeling of he is the master of his domain. Like lots I could say about this, but this really reads classic emperor to me. The globe, I mean, again, I feel like everything is here that needs to be here for me symbolically. The Hierophant, this is gorgeous. I, I, I actually really love this. And I was concerned that this card would be a bit of a turnoff for me. I'm curious what the guidebook says about this card. I know I'm kind of out of order here, but that's okay. We're going to roll with it. 
So here's what the guidebook has to say about this Hierophant card. Meditating between the human heart and divine intellect stands the Hierophant. Reflected here as the Christ, he opens his arms wide to all who will listen, relieving us of our need to solve every mystery. He offers salvation through the simple acceptance of truth. This truth is then forged into the minds of future generations through centuries of tradition. Believing that higher spiritual planes are achieved through self-emptying and devotion, the Hierophant calls us to surrender our individual egos and adopt the like-minded nature of his followers. Although his message is received in the light of the sun, he teaches from a boat floating on the waters of the subconscious mind. Hidden scrolls of Gnostic texts lie submerged, implying there is more to him than meets the eye. And the keywords here are conformity, self-surrender, devotion to path and tradition, and reversed rebellious illusion of separateness, rejecting tradition. I think that's really beautiful, actually, and I thought this would be a bit of a turnoff for me because I don't follow a Christian path. But I do think there's beauty in the teachings of Jesus, and I think this is really, really lovely, and I think it captures that essence without going to a place that would, I think, take me too far from my own path, and I really appreciate that. I really love these texts below the water. Oh, boy. Lovers. Okay, this is another card that, again, sold me on this deck. There's several things that jump out at me from this image that I absolutely adore, but the first thing is this path that leads up to this couple high on the mountain, and this has to do with an analogy that I hold very close to my heart about relationships in general, any kind of relationship, and the concept that when we form relationships, we're essentially walking with somebody who's also on a, on a growth path and we happen to be walking the same part of the path at the same time but sometimes one of us will need to go ahead and the other one will need to stay behind or one will need to speed up the other will need to slow down and those things are just natural parts of our individual experience but here you see a couple who has shared that experience for a time i also love the sun and moon in balance in the back it has a real yin yang energy to it that i really appreciate and a real a capturing of the duality or the balance between masculine and feminine energies, which I enjoy. The chariot. Okay, this is really beautiful. And I she's holding reins, which is something that normally is not something I'm a fan of. But I also think it's interesting that there's like five, like, and I, these almost look like fox kind of creatures here in front. And she's holding the reins, and yet there's these hands sort of hovering above. And again, you get this feeling of divine support or assistance or a little bit of a push from uh, a higher being or a higher energy and I I love that this deck is really vibing very high vibe and very spiritual for me so far and I, I really really am actually enjoying that more than I thought I think I think I thought I would here we have the strength card and I love that the lion is so overwhelmingly gigantic next to the girl here and you get this feeling like it can feel like the things that we're battling the things that we're up against are much bigger than we are and for her to have still made, found a way to make peace and maintain the control that she needs, but in a soft way, beautiful, beautiful. One of my favorite hermit cards I think I've ever seen a picture of. I think this is so beautifully illustrated. There's a lot of wisdom, uh, deep wisdom here. We get this idea of like a spider woman and being deep in the cave. I love crone energy in the hermit card and that um, recognition of the divine wisdom of, or the wisdom of the divine feminine, I think is what I, where I was going with that. Wheel of Fortune. I love that we have the moon phases. We also see trees in different cycles of life. And we also see the sun in different cycles. We have like sort of the morning sun and the evening sun here pictured. Um, I, I just, at least that's what I'm seeing. I don't know if that's intentional. And then all the way around the wheel are like these feet all in different sort of shades walking the earth. And you get this feeling of uh, people from all walks of life all experiencing the same change of seasons and the same cycles of the moon and there's the things that kind of bring us together and my brain's going in all kinds of places I feel like as an intuitive reader there's just a lot to chew on in these images and it's getting me kind of excited not gonna lie justice and I love that we see three figures here not just one and to me this speaks to checks and balances and the ways that um when sort of rule of law or justice or karma or these things are managed in more of a group dynamic there's a different energy to just one singular judging force and i think that's super super awesome i love this like crystals that are being held up here there's a feeling of her having lots of support they've got their hands on her almost as if they're feeding her energy or supporting her from literally from behind while she makes these tough calls and i think there's yeah and, and again we have the sun and the moon in balance there's a lot of this sort of select celestial background information that's coming through in this deck love 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 this vulnerability in the hanged one. The way that she's flowing and like letting the wind move her. I feel like there's there's movement here. Almost like she's swaying. Um, there's a, again, surrender feeling to this card. So pretty. Death. Oh. 
it's as if the butterflies are um car all these butterflies are carrying her you get this feeling like she's floating through the sky and in death these butterflies are literally um lifting her up into the air like f flying her i don't know how else to describe that that's a really beautiful death card temperance here we have that angelic figure with one leg on land, one in the water, and then balancing the waters between the two cups. This works. It's very simple and straightforward. It works for me. The devil. This unseen force in the caged figure, but the keys within the cage. I mean, that definitely ticks all the boxes. Interesting to me, again, here are her wings, only they're separated and they're hanging on the wall as if she consciously chose to give up her freedom and is now, even if she's regretting her choice, maybe she's not even see, regretting it yet, but she's definitely very, very contained. She's also blindfolded. Really super interesting. Again, so much to chew on as an intuitive reader. I feel like there's different aspects of every image that might catch my attention when I'm using the deck. The tower here. Interesting to me, the first thing that jumps out at me about this tower is, well, there's several things that are jumping out at me, but one of the first things is the shape of the tower itself. It's been built so that each level is smaller and smaller and smaller, like a pyramid. And at a certain point, you can't build anymore. You can't grow anymore. There's a stopping point. Like, you can't, you have no room. It's kind of like... Um, there's a video game, that's such a strange reference, but there's a video game that does this where um, if you don't line up the stones perfectly, one on top of the next, kind of in this like sort of Jenga like digital game, um, they just get smaller and smaller until there's literally no room left. There's only one little pixel and then you have no place left to put any more stone. And so this is making me think of the idea that the reason the tower is coming down is because there's no more, there's no way to continue growing in that structure. It's like hit its natural end point. Um, another thing that caught my attention is sometimes it's nice to read the tower um, in a way where the foundation is still good and still strong and you can rebuild from there. You just need to rebuild it differently. And this image leaves space for that translation, which I really like. Lots of things to, oh, so good. The star, really beautiful. Not a lot to add here, but this is gorgeous. And I love the lotuses in the water. The moon, this recognition of the, of the deep subconscious self. That's what jumps out at me when I see this image. This recognition of the shadow or this recognition of a part of ourselves that maybe we don't look at very often. Maybe it makes us uncomfortable. Maybe it's not shadow. Maybe it's just the inner wild. I love that. That's beautiful. And the sun card. Oh, again, I'm loving these big hands that show up in the artwork. They make me think immediately of a higher power, of deity, of spiritual support, of the universal support. And here this girl is just basking in the sun. She's got some fruit and she's fully exposed and supported. I see why Dawn really enjoys this deck for her um, self-care Sunday readings. Judgment. Interestingly here, I almost wish there was a little bit more in the image and yet I'm really going right to or my eyes going right to this place here where a hands being held up and there's an eye opening because for me, judgment is very much an awakening moment or a light bulb moment or a clue by four moment. Something's shifted and there's an opportunity to see things in a new way. So that still works. I just, I'm almost wishing there was a little bit more to that image. The world, love this, so beautiful and everything I need for a world card is represented here. The Ace of Cups. I just, I love me an overflowing cup in the Ace of Cups. My needs are not very specific in this card, but I love to see an overflowing water source. Oh, I love this beautiful balance and back and forth energy of the Two of Cups. It's almost like we've zoomed in on temperance in a way, that kind of temperance feel, except instead of one person balancing the two waters, it's one per, or excuse me, it's two people balancing the two waters. I think that's really gorgeous. The Three of Cups. Again, that exchange of water. Every cup is taking in and giving out. There's that um, supportive, collaborative, emotional flow. The Four of Cups. I love this because it leaves room for that sort of emotional stability interpretation that I enjoy when I'm working with the Four of Cups. And she's peaceful. Her back is to us, so we can still read into that um, that idea of maybe n not seeing everything or being a little bit closed off, but at the same time, we still see that stability. There's a bit of almost pippish quality to this, the Minor Arcana so far, and I'm really enjoying that it gives some flexibility to the interpretation. The Five of Cups, definitely get classic Rider Waite Smith Five of Cups energy here, but it's simply illustrated in a way that I think really works. And I want to be clear when I say simply, I don't mean this art was simple to create because I could not create this, but I do mean that like when I say simple, it, to me it's like clean. It's like there's not a lot of clutter. 
Six of Cups. Oh, I love this. When your cup is full, you can then give back. And I think you're seeing this trickle down effect, right? Some, you know, almost like the, the first cup is being filled by faith, by spirit, or by connection to source. And then because their cup is full, it overflows to the cup below. And then that overflows to the cup below. And it's like that pay it forward feeling. Love that. The Seven of Cups. This is really pretty. I'm not getting the same sort of being torn um, between decisions or or sort of floating in fantasy land necessarily. It feels like there's very one very clear decision or one very clear focal point to this card. But at the same time, it's really, really pretty. The Eight of Cups. Everything I needed in Eight of Cups. These are tumbled over as opposed to upright, which was which is kind of what we typically see. But I like that she's sort of got her back to them and she's headed off now. Like there's a lot here to that she's leaving behind, but she's doing that for herself. The Nine of Cups. This is all I need in a Nine of Cups. Now I don't know what it is, but I absolutely adore seeing water and trees together in my Nine of Cups. I wish I could describe that better, but there's another image I'm thinking of from another deck that I just also really enjoy, and it's a weeping willow tree and, and a girl in a pool of water, and it just, this scene for me, this setting is so evocative of what the Nine of Cups feels like to me when I look at the card, what it feels like, the emotions it, it evokes, so that this really is, yeah, ticking the boxes. And the Ten of Cups, I like that we see all, again, all the way around here, we get the feeling of lots of people from different walks of life, different sort of tones and colors and then in the center this peace and this dove there's a feeling of sort of community as opposed to necessarily just um what we would think of as a stereotypical family i think that's so pretty the daughter of cups this is the page love this love the way the emotions are just flowing out of her the water is just flowing out of her and she's literally in a pool all the way up to her heart level of water and is playing with the lotuses yes the Sun of Cups, also still overflowing water. It's still going everywhere. There's a little bit of that sort of um, flowing out everywhere to the Cups suit in general. Like there's a the way that they handle their emotions and the way that they um, are in their emotions and in their heart space. This, this visually just really works. And the Diviner of Cups, which is our queen sort of rank or queen level of the of the minor arcana court cards i like that her eyes are closed but her third eye is open she's very much the intuitive in this image and i think that works really well and our sage of cups which is much like the king i am noticing actually now that i'm looking at this card there haven't been a lot of males or more masculine depictions in the deck so far we had the hierophant and the emperor were both very masculine and we had um, a masculine looking figure in temperance a little bit and in the lovers i'm just thinking yeah so it does seem to be much more focused on sort of the feminine which works for me personally and I'm, I'm actually really enjoying the vibe of this deck in that way but it's something to be aware of but this is the sage like the king and i'm getting more like um mother of the maiden mother chrome triad this feels very mothery to me and um leader e which is what i want for my king of cups or my sage of cups anyway Ace of Coins, I love the little orc acorn here, and we're seeing the oak tree at different levels of growth. I think that's super potent and beautiful, and this idea of potential and opportunity, love. The Two of Coins, and I love that she's in tree pose. That makes me happy. I think that's a beautiful depiction for the Two of Coins. This is great. Each hand holding the other wrist and this feeling of collaboration, and working together, cooperation, beautiful the four of coins here again we have a neutral four which i really appreciate the writer wait smith four of coins of course pictures somebody who looks a little bit more um i'm gonna pull it out for you guys to see oh well done there it is the four of coins in the writer wait smith is a lot more like closed off and sort of shut in i like that here her heart space is exposed so you get the feeling that she is open she's just making a conscious choice to be in her stability to hold on to what she has to maybe turn inward love that the five of coins we get that that difficulty is definitely coming through with this image there's something about the way watercolor um depicts well water of course but like tears specifically or emotional energy flows really well I think in watercolor art and I think that's one of my attractions to this deck the six of coins I one of the things I really look for in a six of coins is that you I wanted to show that sort of um, depiction of give and take without necessarily knowing who's the giver and who's the taker or who's receiving and who's um, giving who's who's being the generous giver and who's being the um, open receiver 
and I, this has that sort of um, ambiguousness to it that I look for in the Six of Coins. The Seven of Coins with the Sunflowers. Okay, I enjoy this. And the Seven of Coins being a time of evaluation and sort of waiting and seeing what you're going to harvest. This is cool because with sunflowers, of course, when they reach their full maturity, you have tons of sunflower seeds. There's a real bounty to sunflowers. I like that image. That works for me. And the Eight of Coins. Is she sewing? It looks like she's sewing. Oh, I love that. Oh, she's making a dress. You can see it on the little... So I'm trying to like bring it closer to myself. You guys are already zoomed in, but there's an image of what it is that she's trying to make and perfect up here. And you can see she has like a dress form here and she's just working on the components. It's just like a slow and steady, almost as if, and it's because it's a bulletin board, you almost get the feeling that this could be a profession or something she's hoping to turn into a profession. Love that. Oh, and here's the dress now that she's made it. Oh, <gasps> Oh, I love that. Look, she's completed her dress. She's able to wear it and enjoy it. Okay, that progression from the nine, or excuse me, from the eight of coins to the nine of coins is so cool. I love that so much. I don't know that I would have noticed that if I had just started playing with this deck out of the box and not like done one of these videos. So one of the many things I get out of doing these videos, you guys, is getting this time to really bond with the imagery in the deck, which I really appreciate. So lovely. Ten of Coins, I really enjoy that we're seeing a depiction of family that is simply a, a parent and a child. And whether that is a mother and a child or a father and a child, I think it's nice to see a different depiction of family and of, of legacy and of passing on one's knowledge and wealth that isn't necessarily only depicted in that generational or kind of nuclear family way. So I really appreciate this. I think that's really beautiful. Daughter of Coins, it's like she's starting up a little plant shop. I love that very industrious our son of coins and I can see behind him there's this like landscape and you know like, he's it's like he's looking at you going okay I'm gonna take this to the top of that mountain okay bye I'm gonna I'm gonna be a while the diviner of coins our queen of coins love the bounty with the apples and the fact that there's already like an apple being eaten and enjoyed here to the side on the table with the cutting board and then there's more being picked actually those look like they could be peaches those might be peaches pretty sure those are peaches that's beautiful I love that Mind you, I've been enjoying peaches lately, so I might just be seeing what I want to see. Okay, I love that the Sage of Coins, here's another progression, right? We get this feeling like here, our page of coins has become our Sage of Coins. And years later, she has this flourishing plant shop, perhaps even turned into something even more. There's plants and herbs here, but she's also got a singing bowl at her feet. Maybe she's teaching some wellness classes. So it's like, what has this turned or blossomed into now that she's been at it for a while? Like there's a real feeling of having achieved one's dreams. This is really, really thoughtfully and beautifully illustrated so much to get out of these cards the ace of swords love the simple clean clear clarity and the balance and symmetry in this card absolutely appreciate that our two of swords one sword up one sword down trying to figure things out she's not blindfolded i think it's interesting that she has the two little birds here as if she's like listening for um, a little bit of support or messages from spirit here we do get the clash in the three of swords, but we don't get that like sort of stabbed heart, which I actually like. I think it gives us more space to play and interpret with the meaning, interpret the meaning rather. Another peaceful four. Okay, I'm definitely appreciating the fours in this deck so, so much. Um, I love a good meditating four of swords. I think that really works. Oh, and here we have the five, the heart being stabbed by swords. So interestingly, she's taken this image into the five as opposed to the three. But I think it's interesting that this eye is open in the middle of the heart as if the experience is being had and the person experiencing the pain of being maybe taken advantage of or taken for granted is fully aware of who's doing this to them or how it's being done. There's not a, a, a being caught off guard necessarily. It's like, yeah, I, I'm getting a lot out of that. Again, this is an image that I think if I had just, just looking at this image on the internet, for example, I might not get this much from it, but being able to really sit with it and look at it, it's just, oh, yes. The Six of Swords. Okay, I really enjoy this because normally in the Six of Swords, we'll see somebody being sort of ferried away from the trouble, ferried away from the pain, the drama, the conflict. And here we have somebody who it looks like to me is turning to face that conflict and sort of standing up to it in this really empowered, beautiful way. And is like her hands are to the sky, almost like she's consciously releasing the hold that that drama and conflict had over her. Man, this one is just speaking to me like everything. I just, oh, oh my goodness. Okay, the seven of swords. So there's a bunch I'm getting off of this, actually. So she's climbing the swords like they're a ladder. But I get the feeling almost like 
she's in the seven of swords we often see something that looks like somebody's doing something sneaky or maybe somebody's shortcutting something or there's a little bit of deception or self-deception here actually i feel like somebody's using the resources that they have now this could be both good or bad right sometimes there is an element of um, cheating the system or using something inappropriately or using others inappropriately. But here we get the feeling this person is really just trying to get from point A to point B. There may be some short sightedness involved because obviously they can get cut climbing a ladder of sorts. Um, so there's a little bit of like that not maybe thinking through the consequences, but you do get the feeling that they're just trying to get from point A to point B. So there may not be any malicious intent involved. So there's a whole lot. Again, I, I, I probably these are the kind of images that I might get different things from every time I look at them, but that's what I'm getting at first impression. Eight of Swords. Oh, this reminds me so much of a card from the Osho Zen Tarot where there's a caged bird and the cage is in the process of dissolving. And so the birds can the bird can go out and fly with its friends here. Actually, the, the blockage is in front of us, like in our field of view and the person being blocked or being felt feeling hemmed in is on the other side. But the sun is behind them and this bird is clearly flown in from behind. or that, That's the feeling I get. So you get the feeling this person just has to turn around like the wall is only on one side it's not a cage it's just a wall like walk around it turn around go a different direction oh my gosh this deck has got me in the zone have a sip of water nine of swords oof all that pokey pokey from up above kind of stabbing into the mind that totally works oh the ten of swords and she's under the water that feeling of overwhelm and like oh yeah that works. I appreciate that there's no blood in that card. Love this Daughter of Swords. She is just all in. I love this. This is like, um, it's kind of like the Fool energy a little bit in this card, except for without maybe thinking things through without the faith um, of the Fool card. I feel like I might get different things again each time. The Son of Swords. Love the movement with the trees and the leaves. There's also a sense of season that comes through, obviously, with the birch and all these birds flying. Oh, the intensity in his gaze. What a powerful queen of swords. Oh, I love that. She's got some sass in her. A little more passion than I'm used to seeing in the queen of swords. And this, again, called the diviner of swords. Really, really interesting. She's definitely in touch with the emotion, but there's... There's also a, um, a rigidity to her as well, which you could play with intuitively. Love that. The Sage of Swords. And just out of curiosity, I feel like, yeah. So again, I feel like here we could see perhaps the evolution of the page. I don't know, like, I feel like this person here is now this person here, but her cloak, her her other dress is often behind her now. And maybe that's not intended. I just feel like that's a story that's working for me when I'm looking at these cards. And this idea of having like gotten to a place where she knows how to balance out her ideas with, you know, um, strategy and with really thinking through consequences and that sort of thing. Wands, our final suit. So we have the Ace of Wands. I love this, just the beginnings of fire. You get the feeling this is that stick that you would roll between your hands to start. You got the smoke starting from the bottom. So it feels like the very beginnings of that flame. I love that. I think that's really a cool way to depict that. The Two of Wands. I love the crossed wands here right in front of this long path. You get the idea of definitely lots of possibility ahead and um, a wide view, which I like in the Two of Wands. The Three of Wands three wands overlooking that vast sea and the sun setting and you can get that idea of manifesting for um possibility or embarking on a journey love 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 the four of wands oh she's by herself you know what this looks like this looks like somebody who is doing a dedication ceremony um, under the under the moon light for herself so dedicating to herself or dedicating to a spiritual path that's what this looks like. And it, that's so beautiful because we normally see a, a dedication to another human here, like a wedding or something. And here we have somebody who's reached that milestone and is actually dedicating to her own path or to herself. Such an empowering message in that card. And the five of wands here, we have that sense of like, everybody's trying to figure out who's going to be the one, you know, there's that competition vibe here with these cross stabs. Again, very clean imagery here so that you can focus on the meaning of the card or the message without a lot of visual clutter. And I'm really enjoying that. And it's funny because I don't actually always vibe with white space, a lot of white space on my cards um, because I'm such, I respond so much to imagery and to color and, but there's something about this that just, oh, it's just really working for me. 
the six of wands here with the success and the vibrancy. But again, I think it's really interesting and empowering that her, it's like a self honoring happening here. We don't see a whole crowd of people like validating her experience. She is like, con kind of being validated on her own. She's maybe even validating herself. I love that about this card. The seven of wands. I don't know what I think about this one. Like at first I was like, oh, it kind of reminds me of the nine of wands. Um, often we see somebody who's de who's in a defensive stance, like sort of standing up to a crowd, that sort of thing. But the crowd of wands is behind her and she's holding the defense in front of her, her two wands crossed in front of her. There's still a, a crossed wand in front of her sort of sacral area, almost like she is definitely like kind of walling off her emotions or like protecting herself in some way, but it doesn't have the same... Um, action, I guess, that I'm used to seeing in a Seven of Wands card. So traditionally in the Seven of Wands, just so you guys know what I'm talking about here, um, this is the kind of imagery we have traditionally, right, where somebody's up on the high ground and they're sort of defending themselves against these on oncomers or attackers. And here it's just a much calmer energy in general, so I might have to sit with that one a little bit. Eight of Wands, this definitely works. Very classic Rider Waite Smith there. The nine of wands, oh, it's like she's crawling to light the very last wand up here to like finish the job. It's that last push. Very peaceful ten of wands. There's a lot of responsibility and almost leadership I feel like is coming through in this image versus the more classic um, burden feeling of the Rider Waite Smith card. Really interesting. Daughter of Wands, she looks like she's dancing with this lit staff. And I love the flowing, like, lavender white hair here. I think that's really pretty. Our Son of Wands, he's looking right at that flame. He's very connected to that fire and what it's doing. Diviner or Queen of Wands, lots of power in this card, which I love. A very empowered Queen of Wands really works for me. And our Sage of Wands, again, I want to compare to the page. This, these two are definitely not the same figure and the same person, so we're not seeing that progression. So that might have just been in my imagination, but I know for sure it was in the coins. Um, but I still really enjoy this card. I think that's, I love the swing set. I love the confidence to be who you are, not worry what other people are going to think. That really speaks to me. And we have the Awakening card, which is the bonus card in the deck. And there is a little bit more about that in the, is there actually a mention of the Awakening card in the guidebook or is it only in the insert we get? I think it might only be in the insert. Let's see if there's any mention of it. Yes, yeah, so there's no mention of the Awakening card that I'm seeing. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, there is. Oh, and I just kicked my camera. My apologies. Oh, now we're all over the place. Well, that's what happens when I move it all. Okay. I can edit that out if I need to. I'll see if I remember. Anyway, there is a page in the guidebook about the Awakening card, but I'm going to let you discover that on your own if you purchase this deck. It's kind of a fun unique thing that I think is fun to experience on your own. All right, so let's zoom out and I'm going to give these cards a shuffle and then we're gonna take a look at the guidebook a little bit more. Maybe read another entry. I know I read one near the beginning, but let's just see how she shuffles. Oh, she shuffles so good. This deck size is not something that um, is uncomfortable for me. I have larger hands and I have fairly strong hands, um, but it doesn't feel overly thick or difficult to shuffle. But keep in mind that that's obviously coming from my perspective and I don't typically have that problem. Um, but it's really beautiful. It's got a lovely sound and the cards are matte, but they're not clumping. Look how beautifully they sort of separate and glide. I think that's really lovely. All right, let's pick a card and then we'll take another look at the guidebook. And first few riffles, no sign of any chipping. And I will say that sometimes with this kind of gilding, if it's gonna chip like that, like badly, it chips like pretty much right away. No sign of any chips. Two of wands. So let's just see what the guidebook says about the two of wands. Ah. Each hand holds a fiery wand, showing perfect balance between creativity and logic. The wands intersect and find their focus on the road ahead. The fire grows brighter with the confirmation of following the right path. Oh, I love that. Almost like um, dowsing rods. And like once you kind of hone in on that place or like a um, metal detector, right? Like once you hone in on that right place, it's like the, it like beeps. 
right? And it's like with these two wands, it's like the fire bright, brightens when the right path is discovered. I think that's a really cool way to look at that card. Okay, I'm really excited about these. I have to admit, I don't think there's any spreads or anything in the guidebook, no. I remember taking a quick look. So that, my friends, is the Ember and Aura Tarot. And man, is this beautiful. I am so, so glad I was able to get my hands on it again. Thank you again to Jamie for sending this to me for review. I really, really appreciate it. I love being able to share this stuff with everybody. And this is definitely one that I'm going to be coming back to again and again. Oh my gosh, you can barely see the cards because it blends with my background cloth so much. Anyway, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. I hope that you enjoyed this walkthrough. I would love to hear your thoughts on this deck down below. Is this one that you own? Do you use it? Do you love it? How do you use it? Let us know. Is this one that you want? I will have all the important links down below where you can purchase this deck. And I am really looking forward to hearing your guys' feedback. Make sure that you like this video if you enjoyed coming along with me for this little trip through the Ember and Aura Tarot. Please do click subscribe if you are new here so that you will see my subscription or my video showing up in your subscription feed. And click the little bell to be notified of all my future videos. If you want to see this deck in action, keep an eye on my readings channel where I do free live reading uh, events. And I also do pick a card readings, month ahead readings, all that good stuff over there. That channel will be linked at the end of this video, so it'll be really easy to find and in the description box down below as well. Remember, you can always book a reading with me over at SupportiveTarot.com. Thank you so, so much, and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye, guys.